Battleship Cove. I'm your host, Tom Lowney. We're here today inside Battleship Massachusetts showing you a little part of inside the history here of Battleship Massachusetts. Now, Battleship Massachusetts is a floating city. So you have over 2,000 people on board you have to get information to or you have to provide uh, notices, instructions, all kinds of things that have to be printed up. So on board this ship, since she is a floating city, they had a print shop. That way you could do forms, documents, and they even started a newsletter on board here. So down here, and this is this museum area of the ship, which is the aircraft exhibit, stashing one of the original spaces here is the ship's print shop. Now this is an old style print shop that some of you have no idea. You're all used to printers, copiers, zap, do it up on Word, whatever you use, print it right up on your printer, your laser printer. But back here in World War II, we had no such thing. We had a print shop, the old fashioned way. So if you come this way, we'll show you. Now the print shop here did everything from, like I said, forms, documents, uh, informational booklets, and they even had a ship newspaper, the Bay Stater. Now these are printed examples of what was actually printed here through World War II to keep us informed. So if you come down to the exhibit, you can actually read some of the stories and lines. And it was actually continuously used when she became a museum ship before laser printing and everything, and we used to print up a quarterly paper, and the base data continued. And we printed up right here in the shop. So come on in, we'll show you the shop. So looking around, this is quite the print shop. This is how it used to be done, what they say, the old-fashioned way. All right. Now, as you come in a print shop, you'd have to take your raw stock, cut it up to shape, and set it up for the printers. But the print machines, you had to actually set up with type and type bank, which is stone, is it called, would set up for your press. Now, this is one of the leftover forms, and as you can see, the tools for opening and loosening, little clamps, I shouldn't take it apart, but this is set up and laid out because we used to run a ship's paper in here. So you'd have forms set up that you would take in here and stick in your press. Now, you would have to go in a tight bank here. You'd pull out all these blocks. And if you look, there's wood in here because you would set this up and use spacers in here to set up how you want your print form. So you had different blocks all the way through. This is original stuff. Little pieces of teak wood. But these are all your blocks that we use. Yikes! First time opening it. I didn't think that drawer was that short. But all the original tools are in here. Spacers, tweezers. Clamps, the locking up. Seeing this is flashbacks to days in shop. Some of you out there may remember a shop, print shop in high school and junior high school. But I went to school for some of this. Okay, you'd have setting for tapping this stuff in. Here's a map of directions to Battleship Cove. You would have cartoons. Some of the stuff was sent out when you used to have it done that you would actually have something done up in lead. Now this is lead because we don't chew on it. We use it to print up because you gotta remember, you gotta make these forms and print up lines on something you can reuse. So lead is a very easy thing to melt down and reform. So before you get to the stone, you have to write up what you want and you bring it to somebody to the line type machine. Now this would sit here, you sit here, and you type things out in a line, because you'd have to figure out how big you wanted the paper, and you'd have slugs in here that would be, you would 
type in what you needed, and you, there's a lead pot here that you would actually heat up and melt the lead, and you'd make a slug, and these little brass keys that came out, which would be over here, needs to be set up in the machine, and they would set in a form for either lines or letters, and you'd make a slug, a lead slug, for the job press. And these are examples of them. So you could see, let's see if there was, you could see some of the writing there, the letters. Now these slugs would come out, depending on what size and what you wanted, as you typed them out, and these letters are coming down in the tray and set up in a form, and then the lead would pour in, and it would be reversed because you have to print backwards, so that way you can make a lead slug come out with one of these, and it come out right here, and as it would go on, it'd form them up, the letters that you selected, poof, and you'd be all set. You have your, your, your slug here, come over to the, to the board, and you'd set it in. You use your spacers to space everything out. Now, today you use Word or some other print, and you do all your tickety, tickety, tickety type, and it does it for you. But here, to print out paper, you would have to actually set the spacing by hand. And you'd have your pica gauge over here measured out because it's a different measuring system for printing. And unfortunately, we don't have a pica gauge here. I wish we did, but that's how you would measure for printing. And you would set this up. Once the form was set up, you'd measure out everything, make sure it's set for the paper you want, and then lock it up. You take this, and you take it over to the job press. Now this job press is automated. Some of you guys in high school, way back when, in my age in the 50s, uh, and you're 50 years old in the 70s and 60s, you'd learn on these machines, you'd set your plate in here, and this is your backing. Now this one's set up, it's automated, it has air. So you'd stock, you put your stock in here, and this would come up, suck the paper up and drag it in and drop it inside. As this thing's turning, it would come up on the ink plate, the rollers would bring it down, and as it, the paper was being dropped in, it would compress it and then come back out, and the air would take it out and drop it. So you'd be taking paper out and pulling it out using air, compressed air, as this cam the wheel here is cammed so it would be clicking and printing. So every time you printed, the rolls would come up. This would be your ink plate. And if you had it set up right, your ink would be from your basin up here. Be constantly printing it so that way your paper would not go light or too dark. So you can see how the vacuum would come over come down, stop, when it touched, it grabbed, suck up the paper, bring it out and drop it here. As you can see, the ink would come down, ink up your plate with the rollers for the next run. And the air would come up, and this would automatically, under, under spring pressure on the paper, would suck the next page up, grab it. As it was inking up for the next run on the plate, it would take the paper, and you can hear the counter clicking, because you'd be counting, so that way you can keep track. Instead of one, two, your counter would tell you how much, because you'd have a certain print job, right? So once it reaches the end of its cycle, it repeats the process, coming down again, and continues the cycle. 
So you wouldn't have to manually sit here. You put the paper in and you let it print out itself. Brake control. Because if we're continually running, you're clutching in and out. Now this would be your ink station with your rollers. God, there's so much stuff in here. Flashbacks to high school. I did some stuff at Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School here in Fall River and printing, and we had a similar job press. So you'd have a sink to clean up. Now for paper, you'd get raw stock. You'd have to cut it up. So here's a craftsman. All right. It's all set. It still works. Setting the blades, cutting the stock. This was, this was used actually in the 60s and 70s here at Battleship Cove to put out the quarterly newspaper for everybody. But we haven't used it in so long due to the printing that we now have and the availability. But all this was part of the shop. And here's another bank for setting up your type. Because if you didn't use the LUD, uh, the, uh, in my days in high school it was a Ludlow, but this is a, a different brand, but essentially the same thing, you would use type. Uh, Hmm, let's see. The drawers are gone, unfortunately. Or empty, I should say. There's still some trays here. But this would be your type banks. Now all the type is gone, but you would have individuals. You could do individual letters. If you didn't use the, the uh, linotype here, making them. Excuse me, it is hot. It's just 90 degrees out there. Um, if you didn't use this, you had a type bank and you could do individual letters or setups depending on what you wanted. Because if you didn't have the, the type set up in here, the trays, the different letters, the styles, you could revert back to the old fashioned way, which is setting up individual letters and stuff. But some of this stuff is just amazing. Um, those who are in the printing profession, lithographers, you'd have a blast in here. Most of this still does work. Just we don't use it no more due to it's faster and easier to throw it on a computer and do it. But this is how we got the news out. This is how the crew got their newspaper and kept on to sports news from home, radio messages coming in, uh, printing up the latest and greatest. So not everything is here, but enough to keep it running so you can get the idea of how a print shop worked on a ship. So numerous things that you could have done with this and, and was done. But... It's still here. It's uh, lit up, so welcome to the newsroom. Print everything up here, send it out, and look it up. Take a look. you find some other amazing things. But this shop is, is pretty close to what it originally was. There's a few things just kind of haphazardly spaced in here, but when you look in, it looks pretty much how it really would go. So you like this, look it up online, see what else there is about printing and its history. We're pretty fascinated. And we are, maybe one day we'll get it up and working again, but right now we keep it as is. And someday somebody will come in and get it up and working again. You never know, maybe a historical thing, but inside the history, we give you how it happened and we try to preserve it. And that's part of another series of preserving the ship and its history. Thank you for your time. If you like what you see here and want to learn more, please like, share, subscribe, and keep up to date what we're doing here. If you want to come volunteer, please click in, go to the various spots, and see what you can do. We'd appreciate the help. Thanks again from Battleship Cove. I'm Tom Lowney, Gunner's Mate Retired, Battleship Cove. Take care. See you again soon.